Good morning, we're going to try with the phone. If for some reason, it seems that the laptop doesn't seem to like it. Um, we were recording, we were, it seemed to be recording fine, but actually uh, nobody uh, out there could see it. It wasn't showing up on any other phones or devices. So we're going to try this again. If you can, uh, if you can see us, uh, let us know and uh, give us a little wave or a, or a nudge. Uh, or a like, uh, just to say that actually there is um, a broadcast happening because at the moment, as I say, we have technical difficulties and uh, it's uh, it's been uh, a, a strange morning trying to get things working. What we'll do is we'll pray again, uh, we'll we'll read the verses again, and we'll uh, we'll start again from the beginning. So. Uh, Greetings to everyone. Uh, this is Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellesmere Port. Uh, we're uh, meeting together online as we uh, aren't able to meet any other way. Um, so, um, yeah, let's pray. Let's give this time to the Lord and let's just uh, uh, find out uh, whether um, these things are working or not. But uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Lord. We pray that you would... Uh, override any technical difficulties Lord and come that come against us and we pray that you would you bless this this time bless this season we pray that you'd anoint this uh, message and that you'd fill us with your life and your spirit uh, guide in everything Lord now we pray uh, give us your wisdom for each detail Lord be with those that need your special touch Lord again we pray for uh, Margaret for Myrtle for different ones for Jane and Hayley and Tristan for uh, Janice and Anne, uh, for Renata and her family, each one, uh, for the Mulligans, the Bastions, the Baileys, the Curtis Mackenzies, uh, everyone, Mary and the family, and just uh, thank you for each member of the body of Christ, everyone, or we could remember, we could mention every one by name, uh, but Lord, we pray that you'd really touch now and uh, anoint this time. Fill us with your life, fill us with your truth. Uh, encourage us now, Lord, we pray. And add your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're going to trust that this is uh, working now. Um, and uh, if, uh, as I say, if somebody can find us there, uh, give us a, a, a little nod or a wave. Uh, we I don't know what the the issue was with the church's page. We were um, there. Uh, it seemed to be working perfectly fine on our end, but then uh, the broadcast was not being received by anybody else, um, and uh, also like I couldn't find it on my phone. So uh, we'll uh, we'll try this again. Uh, apologies for the technical difficulties, but uh, God knows these things. We're going to read today from John's Gospel, chapter 6, uh, from verse 5, it says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great multitude come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this saith he to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penneth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would uh, bless and anoint now this time and we, we ask for your your protection over hearts, over minds, over individuals, Lord. Fill us with your life and fill us with your spirit now, Lord. We pray that you would anoint these words uh, and guide as we, as we share something from your word today. Uh, protect and... Uh, and just add your life, Lord. We pray that for your anointing by your Holy Spirit uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, so 
we leave that story at that point. What do you think is going to happen? Where do you think we're up to? What, 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 what will be the next step there? Um, Jesus is there with loaves and fishes, small amount, 5,000 people. You know, what's going to happen? God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing a lot of the time. Even if we don't understand it and we don't, un we don't know, uh, uh, we uh, don't see the end of the story, uh, but uh, God knows what he's doing. Uh, you know, why does uh, God do strange things occasionally? Why does God allow strange things to happen? Why does God allow the unexpected, all the things that we don't like, all the things that we maybe we can see no sense in? Uh, but uh, God is faithful. He has a, 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 an ultimate plan, and he knows the beginning from the end. And actually, God uh, is going to be uh, in control of every detail of our life, whatever happens. Uh, Jesus questions Philip as well. He says, you know, uh, whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Practical question, isn't it? Uh, oh, how do we get bread? Well, we have to buy it. We have to buy it in. And where do we buy it from? And it's like, well, yeah, that's a good question. And uh, why is he doing that? Why does he ask this to? To Philip, is there anywhere around that they could get that amount of bread from? No. Is Jesus being mean to him? Is he uh, is he actually uh, uh, challenging him, or is he uh, is he uh, is he just uh, playing uh, along with his emotions or thoughts? You know, no. Actually, you know what? Jesus is is causing him to have faith. Where does it? Where where are we going to get this from? Uh, it's funny because Philip is in is in John's gospel more than in any other. Really, Philip uh, appears several times in John's gospel. Uh, you see him in in chapter one in Bethsaida. He's there and he's encouraging Nathaniel. He said, "Hey, come in. We found this man that the, the that Moses wrote about." that the prophets spoke about it. this is the messiah come and see him you know come and find him and it's like and and uh nathaniel's response is you can any good thing come out of nazareth but uh philip's answer is an answer of faith hey come and see let's see what god's going to do and then you know in john 14 we see philip again there this time it's like well uh, this time he's being a little bit dense and, and saying, you know, oh, show us the Father and it suffices. And, and, and Jesus said, hey, you know what? If I've been with you, with you this whole time and you don't realise that I am the Father and one and that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And it's like, wow. So Philip crops up a lot in John's Gospel and here in the account of uh, the feeding of the 5,000, which is in every Gospel, and that's an important point, isn't it? That this, this miracle is one of the only miracles that is in every gospel. Why? Because it's a message that actually God is in control. And when things seem to be impossible and things seem uh, to not be going the way that you think, actually God is in control. And it's a little reminder that in every gospel, every gospel, you know, it's the slightly different emphasis. Here, the emphasis is on Philip. It's like, well, Philip, what are we going to do? And also, what are you going to do? Now, where are you? Where are we going to get this uh, bread from, Philip? It's like, well, uh, are you going to trust me? Are you going to say that I'm the Messiah? Are you going to? Yes, you said that to Nathaniel. You said that you encouraged Nathaniel when he was he was full of doubts, um, and you encouraged Nathaniel to come and, and discover for himself. Uh, are you going to now, when uh, you know it's easy maybe to say that to somebody else, but now that it's your situation, are you going to confess faith? Are you going to go forward in it? Uh, 
Yeah. Nazareth. Yeah, well. There's the, an honest answer we have from Philip as well. He says, you know what? 200 penneth. 200 penneth of bread is not going to be enough. You know, well, we, you know, we could spend 20,000 quid, Jesus, on bread. You know, 5,000 people, four pound a head. Could they all have a dinner for four pounds? I don't know. It's like, well, put it into, into days uh, of vernacular. Yeah, you know what? It would still not be enough. You know, where, where are we going to get that, that sort of money? Where are we going to get that sort of resources from? It's like, no, whatever happens, uh, there's, there's no way this can be done. And then Andrew turns up and he sort of says, you know, well, you know what? There's a, there's a boy here and he has some loaves and fishes. And it's like, wow, you know, that's great. You know, uh, all very, all very positive, but it's a bit like sort of, well, you know what? We could, there's, there's one boy here with a few little bits. And, and then I think, I think the point is, Andrew sees all the other disciples faces where it's like, you know, what, what are you playing at Andrew, you know? Uh, What's the point in that? What good is that? And he sort of adds, "Oh yeah, well, what are they among so so many? You know what? That's it's. I I understand that it's it's nowhere near enough, and I, it's very inadequate, and it's hardly worth mentioning. But actually, but I just thought I'd, I'd mention it anyway. Uh, but you know what? Faith, faith in the Messiah." You know, oh, this is the man, this is the one that we got, this is the hope of Israel. This is the anointed one, this is God's chosen one. And it's like, well, is he really? Do you really trust him? When uh, things are not going your way and things are not going uh, as you think they would or they should, that like, well, are we going to trust what, uh, what God does? Can God come through? Could God do a miracle? You know, science has no answer for miracles. None at all. Literally, they tend to ignore them or they try to discredit them or they, they sort of say that they're fanciful or, you know, it's like, well... But science doesn't believe in miracles. It doesn't... It's sort of... Well, really, we can explain it away somehow so that it's not real. But actually, you know what? God does miracles. And, and we have a God who does do miracles and he does miracles in our lives and he does miracles in the lives of other people people that we know and maybe there's people we know that have actually been healed of incurable diseases maybe there are people we, we know who've had situations turn around 360 maybe we've been in those situations ourselves where suddenly the, the world says this and everyone says oh it's terrible oh, this is going to happen and then suddenly God comes through and does something amazing and something that we don't expect. Uh, we have a God who does miracles. We have a God who hears the prayer. We have a God who actually is a God of action. And maybe this world has no, uh, no concept of what a miracle is and how it can work. And that's because they don't know the Saviour. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't know the God of the Bible. And the God of power. And the God uh, of, uh, of amazing uh, fulfilment. The God of promise. The God of truth. The miracle maker. It's easy for us to focus on the difficulty, isn't it? It's easy for us to focus on what's what what is not there. Oh, there's 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 uh, a lot of people here, and there's no food for them, and that lack and that mismatch is the problem, and that is the that is the issue. It's easy to focus on on the on uh, what God hasn't done yet, the difficulty, the over overwhelming problem. You know, sir, the well is deep and you have nothing to draw with. 
how will you give me this living water? Remember that? In John uh, 4, 11. You know, what, what about this? You know, it's like different, different scenarios. Oh. Who will roll the stone away for us? Mark 16. Uh, remember that? One to four. Uh, they, they go early in the morning. Uh, Pastor Shana mentioned it the other week about that. You know, like, oh, um, who will rail, roll the stone away for us? They, I haven't really considered it. We're going to go to the tomb. We're going to minister to Jesus. We're going to take the, the, the spices. Um, Mary and uh, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and, and Salome. And it's like, uh, well, yeah, we're going to go to the... Oh, but hang on a minute. Who's going to roll the stone away? And they get there and it's rolled away. But, you know, it's like there's this idea, oh, there's a problem here. Oh, who's going to do what? What are we going to do about this? 2 Kings 6. You remember that story? There's a famine. There's the, the Syrians yeah, yeah. are besieging um, the, uh, the church. Uh, the, 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 sorry, the city of of, uh, of um, Jerusalem. The Syrians are all round about, and the people are hemmed in. There's no food, and a woman comes to the king, and she says, uh, "Let's have a quick look at it." She says, uh, um, "And the king said to her, What aileth thee?'" And she said. Uh, uh, this woman said unto me give thy son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow so we boiled my son and did eat him and I said unto her on the next day give me thy son and we may eat him and she hath hid her son wow wow and it came to pass when the king heard the, the words of the woman that he rent his clothes. And he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and behold he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Wow. The king was repenting for God, to God. The, 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 the ruler of the nation actually was, was trying to be humble before God. Uh, trying to do what he could. Uh, but the, the the interesting thing is, it's like the, the, these people were not shocked. Uh, this woman came and she had a complaint for the king, and it wasn't you know it, there's no there's no shock about the child murder infanticide there. There's no shock about the cannibalism that's gone on. There's nothing about this abhorrent crime that goes on. Actually, the shock and the indignation is about well you know this woman's being unfair. We've already eaten my child and now we're not going to be able to eat her. It's not right. You intercede for me, king. You know, you get this right. You know, you think, wow, you know, you think about that, the perversion, the complete twisting of what, what people are indignant about. You know what? Could that happen in our society today? Could it be that actually people get very angry on a, on a moral issue, but they're coming at it from completely the wrong idea? It's like, oh, you know, I think it's terrible that a woman can't have an abortion. You know, I think it's terrible that this, you know, that somebody can't choose when they die. You know, it's like, well, you know what? No, the, the, the indignation should be on the Lord's side. We can't expect blessing. We can't expect hope if the, if the if we're arguing from the wrong point of view. If we're coming from the completely the wrong uh, uh, direction, like this this week in the synod of the Church of England, somebody is outraged that people actually stick to biblical teaching on marriage. I mean, how ridiculous is that? That somebody somebody who is supposedly from the church will not uphold the Bible, but would rather uphold their own viewpoint. And tell people that people those that are true, you know, that are believing the Bible are actually wrong to do so. Wow, that's uh, this is the this is the stage we're at as a nation. And you know what? It's like well, it's uh, we are in a shocking era, just like it was in, in that time. Uh,
But the point is, what happens is Elisha stands up and he says, you know what, tomorrow there's going to be loads of food. There's going to be food sold in the doorway, in the gateway of the city. And some people don't believe him. And they doubt and they cast, they mock the, the idea. And Elisha, Elisha says, you know, like, what? You won't, you won't taste of it. There's people who will taste of it. But it won't be you. There will be food aplenty. God knows what he's doing. Don't look at the at the situation now. Don't look at how terrible the situation is at the moment. But look to the God who is going to come through. And look to the God who can come through. And look to the God who is going to do miracles. And look to the God who will will uh, answer your, uh, your enemies. Look to the God who will answer you. You think about this as well. There's... Uh, uh, there's the God who's already rolled the stone away. You know, who's going to do that? Well, you know, someone's already done it. There's a God who's already forgiven you. There's a God who's already healed you. There's a God who's already restored you. There's a God who's already justified you in what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. These things are powerful. These things are real and they're not going away. These things are vital that we hear them, that we know them, that we remember them, that we encourage ourselves in them. This is the point. We have a God who is there. We have a God who comes through. We have a God who's not asleep. We have a God who's not away. We have a God who's not uh, doing something else. We have a God who actually comes through and will answer us. You know, think about this. Isaac Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Oh, yeah, we've got everything. Yeah, Dad, we've got everything organized. So it's all there. You did say it was going to be a burnt offering, didn't you? You were clear on that. It was going to be a burnt offering, wasn't it? Uh, well, there's, I, you know, I can see you've got the fire and you've got the wood, but we, we seem to have forgotten the most vital thing. Where's the sacrifice? Where's the lamb? And Abraham says, you know, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. God's going to provide himself as a sacrifice. And Isaac goes up that mountain knowing that there is no lamb there. And he goes up that mountain to see what God is going to do. And Abraham goes up that mountain again knowing what God has asked him to do. But in faith, knowing that God can still come through. And it's like, well, there's a there's a test here. There's a, you know, can God test our faith? Philip, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Where, where's the bread going to come from? What's the what's the plan, Philip? Come on, Philly, 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 Philly. Where's the plan? What's you, what, what are you up to? You're going to trust God? Hey, do you think I could? Do you think God could do a miracle? Do you think I'm the Messiah? Do you think we could do something here? Do you think it's going to work, or are you going to worry worry about where you know? Oh, I'm going to get ulcers about going into debt to because I borrowed money to buy all that that bread and fish. No, actually, you know what? There's a God who's going to come through. There's a God who's who's going to come. He's going to do it. You know, where are you up to? Where are you up to with God? Do you trust Him? Is he going to come through? Can it happen? Could it happen for you? Could it happen for me? You know, uh, I like this as well. And this sort of ties in very well with the, the song that uh, Sean chose today um, about uh, the, uh, the giants falling, a Ren collective song. You know, it's like, well, um, Deuteronomy chapter two, I read this the other day and it, you know, it's hilarious. You get the chance to read it. It's hilarious. Before we go there, actually, let's do this. Let's go back to Numbers 13. Because we mentioned this the other week, but it's good to mention it again. Uh, Numbers 13, verse 32. This is when the spies went into the land of Israel. And it says, And they brought up an evil report in the land, which they had searched unto the, the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature and there we saw the giants 
and the sons of Anak, which come of the giant, uh, which come of uh, of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Wow. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, it's a great land. It's like lots of milk, lots of honey, lots of big grapes. Lovely. Uh, yeah, very nice. But the trouble is, you know, there's a problem. There's giants in the land. And we're not very keen on the idea of fighting giants. And it's like we won't be able to do it. We, we won't be able to do it. We won't be able to do it. There's an unsurmountable problem here. Uh, no, but hang on a minute. Remember Joshua and Caleb. Well, well hang on a minute. We they're bread for us. Actually, isn't there isn't there a God that comes through? But uh, what I love though is like uh, after that story, bearing that story in mind, go to Deuteronomy chapter two, and this Deuteronomy is like a, a a recap of everything that's gone on in the history since when they came out of Egypt. They've travelled in the wilderness and. Uh, this is the whole. This is Moses going back over with the children of Israel. Like, okay, this is what this is what's happened. This is the this is what God's done for you, and this is where we're going, and this is what's going to happen. And this is the covenant I'm going to make with you, and this is the law, and this is everything, and it, and it's all this sort of thing, and it's really like a, a very long monologue by by Moses about everything that's gone on. Uh, but you know what? In chapter two of Deuteronomy, uh, look at for a minute at verse nine. It says, "And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given it given Ah unto the children of Lot for a possession." The Emims dwelt therein in the time past, a great people and many, and as tall as the Anakims, which were also accounted giants as the Anakims. But Moab called them Emims. And it says, then the Horims also dwelt in, in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them before them and dwelt in their, in their stead, as Israel did into the land of the, its possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Okay, now have a look at verse 19 as well. And it says, and when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress not them, nor meddle with them, for I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted as the land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old times, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims. And the a people great and many as tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them, and dwelt in the land in their stead, as he did for, to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when they destroyed the Horims, for which they for from before them. And they succeeded them and dwelt in their land, in their stead to this day. And it's like, you know, and it goes on, you know, it, it keeps going on. There's the, there's the Hazarims and the Kaftarims and all of these other nations. And it's like, you know, uh, God is saying, hang on a minute, you know what? You came out of Egypt. Now, now let's just remember this. Um, there, was, uh, there was 10 plagues in Egypt. There was um, the opening of the Red Sea. There was leading in the wilderness. There was water coming out of a rock. There was manna coming down from heaven. There was a pillar of fire. There was a pillar of cloud. There was uh, the giving of the law. There was all of these amazing miracles that you saw. There was God speaking from the mountain. There was like, uh, you know, constant provision. There were quails. There was everything that you could ever want. Every every obstacle that you came up against, whether it was people or physical or or um, 
or emotional or needs or whatever it is, you know, God met and he came through. And then we come to the promised land that I've promised to you and I've promised to Abraham and to all of the fathers and I've promised and, and so confident that you brought the bones of Joseph out of Egypt to bring him into the promised land. And then you said, oh, you know what, there's giants in there. Oh, they're a bit big. Oh, I don't like the look of them. So when Moses is, at, they're about to go into the, the promised land. This is uh, generations later. And Moses is recapping the history of what happened. God just drops in there. He said, oh, by the way, you know, you, you know where, you know where the, the Moabites live? You know, it's like, the Moab. well, they're Lot's children. So they're, they're not, they're not a blessed people like you are. But you know what? The Moabites, well, they went into this land where they had the, the Emims, you know, like the, they were giants. They were massive giants, yeah, just like the Anakim. But actually, you know what? God drove them out and gave it to the Moabites, accursed people. OK, yeah, you know, like they weren't they weren't blessed, but God gave them the land, drove out giants, gave them the land. And you know, well, you know, the Ammonites, well, of course, they're the same that, you know, Ammon and, and Moab, they're the two children of Lot, descendants of Lot, another nation there, and guess what, um, well, there were giants living in their land as well, but uh, God drove them out, gave them the land, he's not giving you this land, no, he's got better land for you, but of course, you know, you, God just drove out the giants, for them, just for them, you know, he can do that in the time, and you know, you know, the descendants of Esau, you know, like the Edomites, and the people in Mount Seir, and all of these other, you know, they're related to you, they're sort of similar nations to you, but they're not the blessed ones. You're the blessed ones. You're the blessed ones. But actually, you know what? God just what happened to sort of clear the land of giants for them as well and give them all of the land that they wanted. You know, it's like, mm, here we go. But of course, you know, for you, you know, I'm sure that you were all very fearful and didn't want to actually go into the land and you didn't trust God who brought you out of Egypt. But you know, that's fine, you know, but that, but we've, we'll put that behind us now because we're going to go into the promised land now. And it's just this, like, God sort of sums up what he's done, not just for Israel, but actually for the nations that didn't deserve it and the nations that were cursed and the nations that were sort of the non-blessed ones because you had Abraham who's blessed and his descendants and then you had Lot who wasn't. And then you had Jacob, who was blessed, and his descendants. And then you had Esau, who wasn't. But then God points out that, actually, you know what? If I did this for all of these nations that actually weren't blessed, how much more am I going to do it for you? Do you trust me? Do you trust your God? Can you go forward? Can God come through? What do you think? Can God do a miracle? Can God take you into the promised land? Is your God able how much more will he do it for Israel if he's done all these things for Israel already? Can he not take you into the promised land? Yes, he can. And he does. And he will. And can God do a miracle for us? Can God come through in our situation? The thing that we're worried about, the thing that concerns us, the thing that is most on our mind, will God come through for us? Can we ask him? Can we trust him? Will he come through for us? Do we have a God who answers prayer? Or do we have to say, oh yeah, but it's not practical. Oh no, no, it doesn't matter. We have to do this and we have to give this faith. And we have to make our own provision. We have to try. Or can we trust God? That's the question that we could, we all have to answer at times. You know, can we trust God? And it is the vital question that everyone has to answer throughout their life. And it is the only question that really matters. Do we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do we trust in our God? Do we trust in a saviour? And do we trust in what he has done? And do we trust in what he's going to do? And do we trust in that more than we trust in our own judgment and our own understanding and our own strength and our own vision and our own uh, ideology? It's a question, isn't it? It's a good question. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, today that you ask us all this question. This you said to Philip to prove him because you knew exactly what you were going to do with the feeding of the 5,000. 
We know with the benefit of hindsight, we know what you did. Uh, the disciples didn't know at that point. They were waiting to see what would happen. Lord, as we look to our lives and we look to uh, waiting to see what will happen in our lives and maybe we have questions, maybe we have fears and doubts and, and, and worries and concerns. But Lord, we have a God. We have the same God. We have the same Saviour. We have the same of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life who can come through and who does come through. And if God has done things for others beforehand, and if God blesses even the unsafe people uh, with, uh, with the common grace, with the mercies of this earth, that actually many people who are unsafe, they have nice homes. They have, they have, they have the blessings of sunshine. They have the blessings of, of peace uh, when there is lack of war. The, the, these things, it's not because they are, they are people who trust God. It's God's common grace to everyone. And Lord, we just, we trust you. We thank you, Lord, for that. But how much more are you a God who comes through for the people who trust you and for the people who put their confidence in you and put their faith in you and put their reliance on you? Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can do that. And you want us to do that. And you come through in faithfulness whenever we do that, Lord. We pray, Lord, that, that we would trust you with every step of the way. We would see a God who does miracles. We could would expect our God to do miracles. And we could trust in what you've done, Lord. Fill us with your life today. Fill us with your spirit as we go forward, Lord, this week. And Lord, we pray, if there is anyone watching there who has never trusted in God as Saviour, never trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray that this would be the time when they say, Lord, I, I desire you, I want you, I need you, you are important to me, and you are vital, and I believe in you. Lord, we trust you now to be my saviour, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I can't actually tell whether there's anyone watching or not, or if anyone's been able to see this or not, but we, we, we go by faith and, and we trust that um, something has happened. So take care, God bless, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.